Okay, so um, the presentation that I will do is, uh, so it's a, a presentation that I've done at ISAV last year, a workshop at SC on in-situ uh, analysis and, and visualization. And this is a, a work done with Archon Yildi, Stan Peterka, and Rob Ross, and we are all from Argonne National Lab. Um, so this is a, a very high level presentation with no actual implementation and, and no contribution I mean, beyond some uh, thoughts about what uh, are the challenges of implementing in situ analysis and visualization. So first of all, uh, I guess everybody here know already what is in situ analysis and visualization. Uh, but since we have talked a lot about storage so far, the idea is simply to connect the simulation directly to uh, some analysis tools and visualization tools uh, to perform analysis while the simulation is running without going through storage and using the same resources or nearby resources on the supercomputer. Now, uh, in many situations, uh, we begin uh, the simulation and some resources are needed for in-situ analysis. Uh, for instance, some simple rendering. Let's imagine we have a climate simulation and we just want to check that everything is all right. We have our uh, uh, the correct initial conditions and then we go for a coffee. And uh, while we take our coffee, we the simulation continues and we use a few resources for in-situ analytics. Basically, we want some statistics to come out. And at some point, uh, the statistics tells us, oh, something interesting happened. And here we want uh, to grab a lot of resources and do some heavy rendering of the physical phenomenon that appears, for instance, a tornado. And, and we want to uh, really visualize what's happening and do some complex rendering. So uh, really, we have a need for um, varying at runtime how much resources we dedicate to, uh, to the analysis and visualization process. Now, why is in-situ visualization not elastic yet? Uh, and it's kind of a, 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 a vicious cycle here. Basically, what we have is uh, um, platforms uh, that allow us to uh, grab a fixed number of nodes per job and have a uniform node usage. And because we have those platforms, we have developed programming models like MPI or M OpenMP that uh, give us uh, a fixed size MPI com world or a fixed size num uh, num a fixed number of OpenMP threads, and and we run with that. And because we have those programming models, we have uh, implemented our HPC codes to use a fixed number of processes and a fixed number of threads. So our HPC codes are uh, to begin with very static, uh, and they can't uh, modify the amount of resources that they use at runtime. I'm not talking uh, about workflows yet. And, and so bringing in situ visualization in the loop, we tend to have this same habit of using a fixed number of processes or at least a fixed number of a fixed amount of resources for the in situ uh, analysis and visualization. Uh, but what does elastic even mean? Uh, we can consider what resources we are talking about, uh, what resources we would like to add to the analysis task and, and remove. We can consider why we want to do that, uh, when, and how? So let's take a look at those questions. Uh, the what question is a question of resources. Uh, so we can ask the question, what software constructs uh, are we considering for trading resources? And for that, we can say, uh, I want to uh, trade threads with a simulation. So if we run the analysis inside the simulation processes, uh, maybe the simulation is using some uh, uh, threading framework like OpenMP or Intel TBB or pthreads, and our in-situ analysis is, uh, is also using uh, a threading framework, and we need some interoperability in case they are not using the same threading framework. So this is one first challenge. We may want to share time within the same thread, uh, and that brings the question of scheduling in-situ tasks uh, in some co-routine co or, co or user-level thread-based uh, frameworks, um, which also brings challenges. And uh, if we have set up the uh, analysis and simulations in different processes, then maybe what we want to do is uh, at some point say, uh, uh, we want the process running a simulation to use fewer threads, and we want the uh, in-situ analysis process to run more threads and vice versa. Uh, if we want to trade processes, uh, now we have to consider that we usually are within a, a, an MPI application. So let's imagine we have one single MPI application that has split its MPI com world uh, so that some ranks run the simulation and some ranks uh, run the analysis. 
then the question becomes how do we convert a uh, rank uh, from running the simulation to running uh, analysis code and vice versa. And here the, the challenge is uh, that we need to make the simulation elastic. And usually simulations are not elastic, they are very static. And we need some way of redistributing the data, uh, whether it's in the simulation itself or uh, in between the simulation and the analysis code. Now, if we didn't split MPI-COM world and we just have two distinct MPI applications, then we need to be able, at least on the in-situ analysis side, to dynamically add and remove MPI processes uh, from the, the running analysis application. And here, the challenge is that MPI is very static. Uh, right now, we don't have in the standard some uh, uh, much possibilities for adding and removing uh, processes at runtime. And if we are going away from MPI, then we need to, of course, use an, an, an alternate communication mechanisms uh, or temporarily turn non-MPI applications into an MPI applications, in, in particular when we use uh, existing analysis uh, tools that have been written uh, with MPI. Now we could consider a, a wider decoupling where we uh, submit different jobs. Uh, one job to run the simulation and one job to run the in-situ analysis. And uh, here, uh, one challenge is the communication across jobs. Uh, so we need to have secure connection between these two jobs. Uh, there is also the problem of co-scheduling of jobs. So for instance, if you submit your simulation and then later on you want to submit a job that corresponds to the in-situ analysis of that job, you need a way to tell the scheduler, I urgently need some resources because uh, this is the an analysis job uh, that has to connect to uh, an already running simulation job. And then we can even go further and consider cross-platform job management. Uh, let's imagine you have the simulation running on a supercomputer and you have a second supercomputer uh, either at the same facility or somewhere else. Uh, or maybe you, you want to run your analysis in the cloud. Then you need to do some joint uh, job scheduling so that uh, the, the analysis job can be scheduled at the same time as uh, the simulation job. Now, if we consider uh, the time granularity of in-situ analysis, uh, we can ask the question, what is the smallest entity that stays up and running when elasticity is triggered? Or uh, phrased differently, what should complete before you can make a change in your in-situ analysis? Uh, here, you can say uh, you need to kill your analysis job and submit a new one. That's one way of doing it. Usually, it's, it's a, a way that is relatively easy to implement right now with tools like Visit or Paraview. Generally, what you will do is, uh, is uh, run Paraview or visit servers on a distinct jobs, and they will easily connect to your running application. Um, you can uh, go to the job granularity. Here, you need to stop the application in start the, in, inside the job uh, and restart it. Uh, but you can keep your job. On a, uh, but that means also you, you need a way to uh, modify the, the amount of resources that the job has at runtime, which usually is not provided by, uh, by job schedulers right now. Now, uh, harder, uh, you can uh, want to, uh, uh, so you can want the application to uh, uh, not be uh, restarted. So the analysis application not to be restarted. In, and here, so you need to wait for the ongoing analysis operation to complete, and then your, your existing in-situ uh, job, uh, in-situ application can do some different rendering and change its number of, uh, of resources. And finally, the, the most difficult one is at, algorit at algorithm level. So let's say that you have started um, uh, an analysis task, so let's say a rendering or, or an all reduce or something, and uh, you say, I want the, uh, a different amount of resources and the algorithm can keep running without even being interrupted, and it continues with uh, those different resources. Now, if we consider triggers, uh, we can consider that uh, the user uh, may want to change the resources for reasons that are outside of uh, knowledge of the application. The simulation itself can request a change of resources. Maybe the simulation has some knowledge about the resources that it needs or uh, the content of its data that would trigger some uh, different rendering or some different uh, types of analysis. The performance uh, could be a trigger. Uh, let's say you, you have a monitoring tool that uh, uh, watches the performance of your simulation and the performance of your analysis and considers that uh, um, 
putting more resources to the analysis would make sense at some point because uh, the analysis seems to be lagging. Uh, and in that case, the, the monitoring tool is, is triggering the, the elasticity. The data can be a trigger. Uh, again, you can have a, a monitoring tool or the simulation itself can decide to change the amount of resources for the in-situ task in response to some feature detections in the data. And finally, uh, the most difficult one would be external triggers where uh, something like a job manager or uh, an external system that you have no control over request a change in resources to accommodate for external constraints. So for instance, uh, let's say that you are on a supercomputer sharing with other users and you have told the job manager that your job can be elastic because you have an in-situ uh, part that uh, can change its amount of resources and someone comes on the supercomputer and wants to grab some resources, the job manager is able to say, oh, I can reduce the number of, of nodes that uh, uh, this in-situ analysis job is taking right now and accommodate for the new user. And finally, uh, we can consider different reconfiguration types. So the most obvious ones are uh, upscaling and downscaling. Uh, so you may want to add and remove resources from an in-situ analysis code. Or you can have topological reconfiguration, and this comes uh, when you have workflows. Here you may want to change the computation graph, uh, add and remove tasks, uh, or connecting them differently. Uh, now, all those four directions of elasticity can lead to a, a kind of a taxonomy of uh, and a categorization of what a system can do. So uh, we can say, uh, for instance, uh, by answering those questions that uh, my framework uh, can trade MPI ranks back and forth between the simulation and the analysis code. So the what would be MPI ranks. It does so automatically to adapt to performance constraints. Uh, so that's, uh, that's why. Uh, it can do so without interrupting either code, but needs algorithms to complete first. So the granularity, the time granularity is, uh, is at application level. And it is used to downscale or upscale uh, the simulation and the analysis code. And that's con that concludes my, my presentation. So uh, as I said, it's, uh, it, it was uh, just a, a study of what in-situ analysis can mean. Uh, this is something that we have published at ISAV, so there is a paper about it. And the goal was to uh, um, uh, draw this uh, kind of a map of all the possibilities for Elastic In-Situ uh, to, uh, to plan ahead for some work that we are doing right now at Argonne uh, on bringing elasticity uh, to, uh, to In-Situ analysis and, and visualization. So what I'm most interested in here uh, as a discussion is if there are users of uh, frameworks that allow for In-Situ analysis, uh, Please tell me which aspects of elasticity uh, you would be interested in uh, would, uh, and would have application in your particular case uh, and how you would use this elasticity uh, in your work. Thank you very much.